Welcome back to Nightcap. I hope you guys digested that conversation I shared with Sean Paul. Upcoming on this episode, we have an equally introspective conversation and maybe an equally dicey topic on an issue that I've always been fascinated with surrounding the concept of inner city youth. Is it, are they conditioned to believe that sports and that athleticism and entertainment is their only ticket out as opposed to possibly developing the mental? Well, this guest, Santana Moss, was endearing enough to shed light on this topic and, and, and digest on exactly what he calls the concept of realizing the dreams and, and maximizing the God-given talent that you see in front of you. But understanding that maybe our community and parents in our inner city can do a better job of possibly exposing kids to, to tools that would enable them to branch out and explore the, the spectrum and the plethora of things they can do, whether it be a doctor, whether it be a lawyer. Santana even touches on the topic of the black quarterback. You know, when we were growing up, we didn't see the black quarterback. This is a phenomenon that's, that's what, that we're seeing more and more. In this Super Bowl, we have Russell Wilson. And, you know, I guess media appears uh, shy away from the obvious topic of, of is the black quarterback seen as still a guy that could just run and, and, and seen as a guy who's more physical or more mental? And this is something that Santana shed light upon. I think you guys will really be engaged in what he had to say. These conversations are meant to delve below the surface and connect us, connect us all to society so we understand each other and we understand exactly who we are. We understand our fears, we understand our passions, we understand our beliefs. So enjoy. And for more, please visit www.impeterbailey.com. Just real people, real convo. I'm Peter Bailey, and after convening with Sean Paul, I headed northwest to Emilio Earhart Park, where Redskins wide receiver Santana Moss, a local hero in these parts, held his annual Dare to Dream football classic. The game is what carried Moss far from here. A struggle, he says, defined his tenacity on the field. But every year he returns to breed life into an otherwise comatose Miami inner city. We discuss that passion and the story that drives it. Santana, how you doing, bro? How you doing, bro? Man, thanks for sharing this moment with me. You know, Santana, your name always is one of those names that comes up in Miami mm -hmm. as someone that's always been rooted in the community and giving back to exactly where you came out of. You know, that, that, that just sounds cliche to so many people, but somehow with you it seems real. Mm -hmm. How real is it to you, this day to dream weekend you have in the year? You know, it's definitely real, you know. Um, beyond having an event or a weekend, I try to always be seen around the neighborhoods that really made me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No matter what way that I give back, whether it's a, a contribution, you know, uh, as far as money or something, or you know, just showing love or, or, or giving knowledge, I try to always be, you know, be a part of that. I feel like um, growing up in these city, this city streets, from Liberty City to, to Carroll City, yeah. I've seen so much, you know, I've been through so much, and, and for me to still be here today and to not be faced by some of the things that I went through in life, it's just a true blessing. So, you know, I try to show these kids that, man, you know, I understand what they're going through. Half of them I do. Um, and I understand also that, um, you know, the only way you can really, you know, enjoy and appreciate what we have in this life yeah. is to go through some of these struggles. So to always dream and, and, just, and just stay true to that dream because if you don't believe, then you, you can't achieve. You know, Santa, we, we were talking about dreams earlier. You see me and my buddies, and we were talking about the dichotomy of the inner city. Mm -hmm. And we were just discussing, you know, you paint a picture out here football with the kids. Do you feel sometimes that that story has already been carved in stone for us? Definitely, definitely. You know, uh, I often say, you know, my life has already been planned. 
Yeah. You know, when, when I was created, it's already written what I'm going to be do. I just have to go out and carry out them, them assignments that's already given, you yeah. know? And so that's how I kind of live, you know? I, I don't wake up like, uh, I'm big with saying I don't plan, I don't make plans. Yeah. And people wonder why, why you don't make plans? Why are you always allowed? Because I just feel like, you know, as that day go, or as my time is, you know, uh, spared, I have to do with what I have. And that's just why I always stay on the move, because I don't like to have nothing set in stone, saying I have to do something, or I have to do this. It's, you know, I just feel like I should go with the flow. And that's, you know, dating back into what I'm saying, that I feel like everything is already given. You know, who knows I'd have been doing now, back then when I was one of these kids out here running around the what you, these what, what, what you were thinking when you were one of these kids out here running around? I just always knew I wanted to be a football player. You know, I always knew that one day I was going to have a chance to do what the guys I watch on TV do. Yeah. You know, and I just, like I said, I remember sitting in school when you get those speakers and they say, you know, it's only going to be one or two guys in here that listen to what I'm saying today and it's going to be able to take heed to what I'm saying. And I used to always say, I hope I'm not that one or two guys that's not listening, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was one, I was that one guy or, or two, it could have been more yeah. guys that took what that, that speaker was saying that day and applied it to my life. So Who were one of those speakers, man? Who were one of those speakers you, you know, can remember? Honestly, man, I don't remember names. I'm bad with names. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I had a few, you know, from elementary to high school. Um, I remember the lady that, that she graduated from Kara City Senior High. I think she was the mother on uh, Family Matters, you know. Remember when she came out and uh, donated some money to our school, you know, we won a state championship that year and she donated stuff, you know, donated a, a big check to us, you know, so we can get our rings. Yeah. I just remember her talking and, and just seeing how far she came. And I'm like, man, she came from this school? But by that time, I had already knew that I can be all I can be and what I wanted to be. So, you know, I never had it in doubt. By the time I was in high school, it, it was no doubt or no question that I wasn't going to go on and, and be somebody because I felt like I had defeated the odds already, you know? And see, that's the, that's the, that's the thing, right? When we come out of these communities, that's the give and take. That's the, 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 the. I wanted guys like yourself coming around and touching the people and feeling the people, mm -hmm. making the people see what they could be. But on another level, you're in another world. Yeah. How do you balance the conflict? Because if you come back to this environment, some people ain't really seeing where you're trying to, and you know, sometimes they really don't have the best intent for you. You're right, you're right. And you know what, it's sad, but at the end of the day, I, you know, I, I kind of think that I'm not in, a, in, in two worlds, you know. Mm. True and all, you know, I'm a guy that you probably watch and see, you know, and, and might admire or might not, you know. Some some of these kids do and, and some of them don't. You know, everybody gonna have their favorites. But then again, I don't let what I do on, do for a living, you know, you know, decide who I am as a person. You know, I've been the same person. And a lot of people tell you, you know, I haven't changed from the day that, you know, I became myself, you know. I've, I've always been this this kid that I am now. And, and when I say kids, because that's how I live. I live like, like I was a still, I'm still, growing up, you know, every day is not a, a day to me. I got kids and all, but I still live this life that I once lived when I was a kid because I'm still striving to be better, you know what I'm saying? I'm still tr striving to see what more can I be as a person. And so that's why I don't feel like it's, uh, you know, I'm juggling two lives. You know, when I come around here, it's because this is my, this is my, you know, home. This is where I, I need to be at, you know? So essentially, the money and success doesn't change you, it changes the people around? Definitely. Definitely, hmm. definitely, and, and you know what? I, I heard it. You know, you hear it on albums. You hear it on in, hear it it in music. It's but you live in it. But definitely, you live it, man. You definitely live it, and and you have to change sometimes because, you know, in order for you to let them people know that it's not, you know, as easy as they might want it to be for them, you know, you have to change to let them know, like, you know, not change in the sense of not be yourself, but. You know, change a couple of numbers here and there. <laughs> you know, yeah. change change how you give. You know what I mean? Because I'm yeah. that's all I've always done. To you know, I've heard to to this day. I'm I've still heard. giving. You know, and you know, people tell you I, I, I might not know you and, and and reach my pocket for you. You know what I'm saying? So so how do you say? How do you know when to say no? You just sometimes have to have to have to guess, man. Should I or should I not? I mean, honestly, you really don't know. You really don't know when to say no. Mm. And there's a lot of people that just say no with a straight face. I, I'm one of the people that can't do it. You know, I, I, I have to hear that person out yeah. to see if she or he really needs it or not, you know? Yeah. And if I feel like I should help him, I'm 
I'm gonna help him nine times out of ten. Yeah. You know, and rather I help him one or, once or twice already before, you know, maybe that third or fourth time might be the easiest way for yeah. me to say no because I've already given you that chance, you know. So it's hard to say no, man. And and that's something that to this day I don't think, you know, uh, I ever get over. But the one thing I do accept, you know, uh, why I'm in this situation to give. Why maybe you it's want? not maybe it's not meant for me to say no. So you know, uh, you know, I, I, I sit and think all the time. I say, man, you know, I, I honestly have to just thank the Lord that He's blessed me to be able to give. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say, yeah, you can't give, you can't give to everybody. You're right. You don't want to at times, but sometimes when you really see what people going through and how they living in this world, you, you can't help but to give. So, you know, sometimes I just do it and say, man, I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to give. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to always be in this situation, so therefore I take advantage of it. Question. I've always wanted to ask a professional at this, so I'm sure it's you. Because <laughs> you seem to give me a real answer. There's this glorified, glamorous image of the professional athlete, especially for black kids coming out in the city. We're all from that same space, right? Mm -hmm. I was at a school the other day. You were born with immaculate gifts. You worked hard to get to the upper epsilon of that stratosphere of that career. But to play devil's advocate, when I'm talking to young brothers, and I got 20 of them saying, I'm gonna be a football player. Mm -hmm. It's like, do you think society gave us only two outs <laughs> where we either wanna try to rap or play ball and we don't wiped out all other things? Is that, honestly, you're in that space, you made it. But do you think that's a healthy mentality sometimes to have? You know what, to be honest with you, I never, I never once thought of that. Mm. And, and, and right now I'm gonna break my brain thinking of, 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 of an answer to give you, honestly. But you know one thing I can tell you when you say that? That is one true gift a lot of these guys don't have to work hard for. Interesting. Exactly. You know, I mean, exactly. it's probably a couple of doctors out there that they don't know. They, 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 have, a, they have a chance of being there just because off of they, they sense, mm. off of their work ethic. It's probably a couple of lawyers. It's probably a couple of teachers. Yeah. But the one thing that they know they can do is run on the field yeah. and catch balls and shoot balls and run track. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, when, when you're African-American and you're blessed with, and I don't understand why a lot of us blessed with speed and, and hands and all this, yeah. you know, this talent. Yeah. When you're blessed with it, you say, well, that's, I'm going to use this to the fullest. And therefore, yeah. you don't have no other thing in mind but to be what I can go out here and be good at. Interesting. But sometimes, Santana, I think a lot of us do have beautiful gifts outside definitely, of that. Definitely. But it's maybe we're not fed that we can definitely. develop those gifts. And see, the one thing I just talked to somebody about, man, I was telling them, you know, I say, it's crazy that, you know, I remember sitting in school, in college, and you see so many different kids come through, whether they're different, you know, from different cultures, different races, and you see how they're prepared on a different level when they come to school. We were just talking about So, that. you know, you, you sit back and say, man, you know, I can't fault what they know and what I don't know. But I know one thing I can do is try to apply myself to know a little more to help myself be on their level. You know, as parents, as parents, we have a chance to, to really put into our kids what we want them to be. And a lot of the kids from different, you know, races, especially the Caucasian race, they're, they, they're, they're brought up in households where their parents like basically give them the map, map of what they want them to be, how to be successful. Yeah. You know, we always told the same thing. As long as you go to school and graduate, you're gonna be successful in life. Right. That's really not the, the answer to it's, that. To me, that's not the, you know, to me that's- It's not giving us the tools exactly. to apply. School, I went to all grades and did good in, all, in, in every grade. And when I got to college, I still feel like I was missing something. Me too. You know, so too. I just feel like as parents, if we give our kids a little more than just school, give them something to, to apply other than school yeah. and get their mind on something as a business or something that you're good at or something you know, now from going through school or from learning however you learn, yeah. then your kid has a, a chance of being successful, you know, beyond that school because now he's not going to school and saying, okay, I graduated, now what, I'm, I'm looking for a job. We just out here, it's like we throwing, uh, 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 most of us, we just throwing darts on the wall hoping something stick. Definitely, definitely. Because we were talking about that. We were sitting on this field and we're looking at all these young men mm -hmm. and then we brought up Steve Jobs and we got in that conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like you said, Jobs was raised in the environment of everybody in Silicon Valley. Yeah. So what he knew was the computer industry. Exactly. That's fascinating. 
A little bit of football, man. Yeah. People, you know, I love to be able to discuss what I want to discuss. And the evolution, the Super Bowl is coming up. Yeah. I think Clinton picked, I think he told me he picked the Seahawks, mm-hmm. if I don't remember. The evolution of the black quarterback is something, you know, I don't know why it's such a taboo conversation, mm-hmm. but it's a topic that hell, I'm, I'm interested in. And you basically on the team with the, the guy who's right now the poster, poster boy yeah. of that. Is it unfair when we just focus on that too much, or is it a topic that needs to be discussed where, you know, I didn't grow up seeing black quarterbacks, man. You know, I didn't. I, I, you're right. And you have your missed views of how they label the black quarterback these days, you know. Um, when you have a black quarterback, they're already saying that, okay, he's a black quarterback, but I know he's not going to sit in the pocket and, and be a pocket passer. He's going to run. He's going to run. And so then, therefore, that black quarterback, all his life as a quarterback, he has different ways of winning games. He's not he's not trained to be in the pocket. Yeah. So when you look at it, you say, okay, you have a white quarterback that some of them gifted to run too, but they're trained to be in the pocket. So when we, when we get our black quarterbacks into this league, you know, if they was trained like the white quarterback was trained to be in that pocket from day one, which they wasn't because they have so much talent and so much skill. And some of, God they can, some of them can go out there and play different positions. So therefore, when they are co- as a quarterback, their coach is always teaching them mm. to, you know what, you don't see it, take off. So it's in their head. So by the time they get to the pro level, you know, offenses they don't went through has been designed to per- pretty much run, you know, to run the ball more than you pass it. And then they don't get, they don't have a chance to really come up like the Tom Brady's who was develop who was, the mental who, capacity to, to be able to the read a little more to you know what I mean. So and then some of them get to that they can read and do all the other things also. I just feel like just like what we was talking about as far as growing up yeah. as as African Americans, you know, once you're who you are, you pretty much take off onto that path of this is what he can do, not. Sorry broaden his horizon and say, you know what, this is what you need to be able to do when you get to that next level. I guess I guarantee you there's a lot of black quarterbacks right now in high school that they're probably not reading a lot, you know. They're so gifted that the coach is telling them one or two here and there, we're going to run the option with you. We're going to, you know, so when they get to the cottage level and the pro level, it's already, they done, they done missed all that opportunity to get on that same path as those guys who are ahead of them that's not the same race. Is that just the stereotype because for some reason we're not bred to believe we're thinkers though? Or is that, I mean, it's a controversial thing, but I guess I could see it. To me, to me, regardless of who you are, what race you are as a quarterback, you have to be able to think. And you got to be able to think quick because the guys are coming at you and there's so much other stuff going around. Yeah. You know, so, you know, uh, I'm, uh, it's no doubt that the, a quarterback period has to be one of the smartest, you yeah. know, players on the field, you know. Um, it's just something that you and me are probably never know yeah. why, you know, we are always, you know, pigeonholed into a certain box. Exactly. I mean, that pressure that came with RG3, I mean, do you think that pressure was fair or, I mean, it, it, it was understandable? It was just the city and Redskin Nation. You know, him being him, Heisman yeah. winner, and having the first season he had, yeah. it was almost, you know, bound to happen. Yeah. But I feel it shouldn't happen that way. It shouldn't have been in such a negative way. Yeah. And I think as a player, we have a chance to pretty much control how the media handles us, you know? Yeah. If, if, if he goes out there and have that kind of season, you know, um, later on during the year, after missing some games, mm. maybe they'll be a little lighter on him. Yeah. But they saw him, you know, with the commercials. They saw him with the shirts. So they carry him at him every day in training camp, asking him, does, do he need to practice now? And do I mean, do he need to play now? And, you know, being young, he said what he had to say, you know. He only knew one thing is, no, I don't, and I'm going to be ready, which I don't even think he didn't want to. He wanted to go out there and play in preseason. I think the coach decided him not to. Yeah. So, you know, when you're in that situation, man, it's just almost like a, a no-win situation, and all you can do is go out there and, and do the best he can. Mm. And when we had the season that we had it, man, it was just bound to happen, you know. Me and my buddies got, you know, you know, us guys that sit around and watch football. I can't catch a pass, but we always got all these opinions <laughs> of what you guys do. You know, we, we were talking about... 
you know, the NFL is, is kind of get there's a lot of these different rules with the hits and whatnot. You're a wide receiver. You're one of the best to do it. You know, we kind of feel that these guys making it softening the game. I mean, do, do you feel, do you just want to go out there and play the authentic game that we grew up on, or do you think you want to be protected more? Um, Are these rules protecting you? Football is football. I think a lot of the rules don't protect everybody. So at the end of the day, somebody's getting left out, you know? Um, I think everything is basically instinct out there. You know, a lot of the plays are made off instinct. If I'm going to know that I'm going to tackle this guy low yeah. as a safety or a corner or a defensive guy, that I, it's impossible for me to know that that's how it's going to happen. It's, it's an instinct thing. Now, to to put in our heads that we should, shouldn't go high, that's great. You know, I feel like that's that's trying to keep it safe because there is a lot of guys walking around here with these concussions or the syndromes, you know, the uh, symptoms from the concussions. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it's scary to see what your future is going to be like yeah. afterwards. But I just feel like a lot of the other rules, you really can't, you know, detect what's going to happen because the plays happen so quick and, you know, it's all instinct. So. You see guys get fined crazy numbers, man, for hard work, for money that they work hard for, man. I feel like they need to, you know, ease up on that. But if you want to change the rules, change them. But give us some slack because a lot of the times the stuff that's intentional, you know, you can, you know, you know, give a flag or, or find a guy for that. But some of those guys out there just playing the game to try to make sure their team had the best chance to win and they get, they get a penalty for something that they're not even trying to do. So, Mr. So Tim, when you're coming across the middle, and that ball goes high. Is there ever a moment when you go for that pass, you know you're going to probably get your head knocked off, you still go for it? Is there ever a time when you didn't go for it? The only time you don't go for it when you know you can't get it. Yeah. You know, if it's up there and I know I, I'm not coming down Even though it, you know somebody might. You got to. That's the, that's the nature of the game. That's what you that's what you paid to do, you know. And beyond that, when the years when I wasn't getting paid for it, that's a play that, that needs to be made, you know. Interesting. So, you know, I feel like when there's ever an opportunity to make a play, you're not thinking about really, you know, how critical this hit might hit, Phil. You want the ball. And whether you come down with it or not, you know, that's the price you got to pay. And finally, Santana, you a god fearing man? Definitely. If you had a private moment with God and you could change something or something you want the world, if you could change, I, I believe we could all change the world in my idealistic mm -hmm. view. What in a conversation you would have with him? Because I believe we could challenge God like Joe, you know, no, I believe you can question the creator. What would you ask him to share if you want him to look at something to focus on right now in society and the world today? The way these kids ain't, 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 ain't allowed to be as safe as we was when we was kids. You know, honestly, every day, every year, every decade, something's gonna change about how society is. Yeah. And I often sit and think, like, how was I able to be a six-year-old and walk the streets of Miami and not have to fear somebody snatching me off the street, somebody sexually, you know, uh, doing something to me? Yeah. And, you know, as a boy or a girl, you know, now having kids, I, I, I have an older, my, my oldest is 13, and I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with letting him walk home from school at times. So, you know, I just, you know, the one thing I would want I can't change the world. I won't try. But I, I will hope that if I had a chance to talk, you know, it's a mean thing we can think of. Yeah. I would just want to say, man, you know, give our kids a chance to be kids and be able to go out in these streets and have fun again. Because I see that's why a lot of these kids ain't out no more. That's why you got a lot of these kids. And it's crazy how people talk about the video games, keep the kids inside. But you got to say thank the Lord to but for the video game, because it's not safe outside no more. For and our kids. kids, they just, I hate to sound old fashioned, but the culture's changed. We, yeah. Everybody's doing everything. Yeah. The pills, the yeah. popping, the. It's crazy, man. Every hip hop so, standpoint, who's in your iPod, man? Um, Musically, who are you listening um, to? Rose, Drake, you know, T.I. You know, T.I. is one of my favorites. You know, um, I feel like his. I his delivery is like, a, you know, like a, something like Pac, you know, so he, you I know, the same speak thing. from the heart, um, you name it, Outkast, Outkast is my favorite, you know, uh, group, um, man, you name it, man, I still, I'm still riding with Pac and Biggie too, you know, of I can course. listen to any old album from them guys and, and, and it's like it's on today, day's level, uh, Wayne, you know, you know, pretty much anybody, man, that's got something to say, man, and, and that's, and that's know what they're talking about, you yeah. know, Kendrick Lamar, all those guys, so. When you think about kids trying to get to where you are. I have a belief 
that the reality you believe is more real to you than the reality that's in front of you. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Definitely, sir? definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, it's always was told to me that my structure wasn't going to allow me to be what I wanted to be. Short, you know. Um, uh, Draw small for a while. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and back then when I was young, I was smaller than, you know, the average short guy. So yeah. when it comes to, you know, weight and stuff. So, you know, I never listened to that because that's who I wanted to be. And that's what I wanted to be. And it's crazy how the, as the time changed and you, now you see the guys of my structure <laughs> true. are some of the best at this position. You know what I mean? So it's just, man, dream, dream, and dream. Yeah. Don't never let nobody knock your belief, you know? Yeah. I feel like, you know, regardless if you came up in a house that was fortunate or not, you know, however you got to get it, get it. But keep your dream, you know? And I feel like if you're going to be able to or if you want to be successful in life, that's the only way you're going to be successful. I guarantee you that every millionaire, billionaire didn't sit around and say they wasn't going to have a chance. They believe that. Yeah. These you, guys you, not, I believe you can will yourself into the position you definitely. want. Definitely. Because think about it. There's a lot of guys. It was just, me and Andre Johnson just talking on the ride over here. Most of the billionaires that we know these days are guys that were flat broke, not once or twice, but, but, but numerous of times. And for them to come out of that, to come back up, to get what they have now, it was all about belief. You know? about they believed in something. Yeah. Because a lot of the guys that has the most money lost a lot of money before. And so that's what it's about, man. It's about your, it's basically about your hustle. You know, if, if you have enough belief, then you're going to go out and hustle and get whatever you want. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Time. Thank you for sharing that conversation, you, man. man. Real people, real convo.